<laughs> so the next night they went down there to disciple him and they started talking about, you know, one of these days the Lord's going to come and all the Christians are going to be taken out of here. And of course his brother is sitting right there. He said, What's going to happen to me? Oh, you're going to have a problem, aren't you? So he ended up getting saved too. I didn't know that all at the time. All I knew was I'm standing here with this big football player and there's nobody in the back. He said, what do we do now? I said, well, uh, I guess I'll show you. I was a brand new Christian, never showed anybody how to get saved in my life. I reached in my pocket and had a track, God's Four Spiritual Laws, one we used to use back then. We sat down in the chairs there in the dirt floor in the heart of Illinois Fair in the tent, and I read the whole track to him. I said, well, Law 1, you're a sinner, you deserve to go to hell. You know, Christ died for you. I went through the whole plan of salvation with God's Four Spiritual Laws. At the end, they had a prayer to pray. I said, would you like to receive Christ? You pray this prayer. He said, yeah, I'd like to receive Christ. I said, oh, brother, I got him on the hook and I can't land him. You know, what do I do now? I said, well, it says pray this prayer, so let's pray. We bowed our heads, closed our eyes. I kept one eye open, and I read the prayer off that track. I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> I read the prayer to him. And he prayed and invited Christ to forgive his sins and save his soul that night. He stood up and he looked at me and said, Kent, I've been worried about this for two weeks now. Thanks so much for showing me. I said, you're welcome. First person I led to Christ. He walked out of the tent. Boy, it was a noisy carnival, no, you know, just a mess outside. I just got down on my knees by that metal chair in that dirt floor in the middle of that tent, all the hollering and yelling outside. I said, Lord, uh, it's me. It's Kent. I said, Lord, I've just been saved for a couple of months here. This is all new to me. I'm kind of confused. I said, I don't know what you want me to do with my life. But Lord, if it's okay with you, uh, I think I'd like to do this the rest of my life. I just want to bring people to Jesus. I don't know what's important to you. I don't know. But I tell you what drives me. I want to win souls. I want to influence others for Christ. I want to do this the rest of my life. People say, Brother Hoven, you travel so much. Oh, I know. Man, flew 175 times last year. Spoke nearly 800 times. Going to try to do more this year. They say, well, if you burn the candle at both ends, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. You get twice the light. I know. <laughs> Number 12. I re read the last chapter, folks. We win. Satan thinks he's going to set up his new world order. Don't worry about it. Christ is going to set up his new world order. We're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. The Bible says, The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. He saw an angel come down from heaven having a key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. He shut him up. They would deceive the nations no more. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. That might be us, folks. We may have to get beheaded. Oh, well. Some people don't use theirs anyway. Wouldn't miss it. Right? <laughs> we're going to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Then we're going to see Satan cast into the lake of fire forever. You choose which side you want to be on. I choose the winning side. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. Let him that is a thirst, Come. <laughs> Come, come to the Lord. If you're not saved, come to the Lord and let Him forgive your sins. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. If we can be any help, our ministry exists to help strengthen your faith in the Word of God. Or, if you're not a Christian, we want to get you saved. Amen. That's what we're here for. Give us a call. You can get one of our catalogs. Our material is not copyrighted purposely. Come down and see our bookstore if you're in Pensacola. Or get one of our videotapes if you're not. Or come see our Dinosaur Adventure Land. Man, you want to have a fun time. We're having a blast. We don't really have a plan. Someday we'd like to sell the lawnmower once everything gets covered with buildings, you know, but basically that's the plan. <laughs> we just want to influence people for the Lord. Find something to do. Hey, if you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, it's so simple. You and I are sinners. We deserve to die and go straight to hell for our sin, according to Romans 3.23. If God sent us to hell tonight, it would be exactly what we deserve. But in spite of the fact that God's angry with the wicked every day, he loves you and He wants you to come to heaven. But He's not going to bring you like you are. You've got to come through Christ or you're not coming. So February 9, 1969, a friend of mine said, Kent, you're a sinner. I said, I know that. He said, you deserve to go to hell. 
said, yep, I know that too. He said, but Jesus died in your place. That's why he died on the cross, to pay for your sin. And if you'd like to receive him as your Savior right now, you can take him and he'll take you. I thought, wow, what a deal. I bowed my head and I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell, but I want you to forgive me and save me right now. And on that day, I accepted Christ as my Savior. You could do the same thing. There's no magic words. Just get off by yourself and just say something like, Lord, would you please forgive me? God, be merciful to me. I deserve to go to hell. Forgive me and save me. And then write this date down in your Bible because this is your spiritual birthday. The Bible says, As many as receive him, John 1, 12, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. John 3 says you must be born again to go to heaven. Well, that's how you get born again. As soon as you receive Christ, poof, you're born again. Now you're one of God's kids. Which means he won't send you to hell. He might take you to heaven early if you don't straighten up, you know, but he won't, he won't send you to hell. See, some of God's kids, he takes them home and crowns them. Others, he crowns them and takes them home. That's your choice, okay? <laughs> but uh, well, once my kids got into my family, I was stuck with them. Once you get into God's family, you're, you're stuck, okay? Now, that doesn't mean, you know, you won't get by with things. He may judge you. There's a sin unto death. You know, you can commit sins as a Christian and God will kill you. But He won't send you to hell. He gave you eternal life, not temporary life. Cover all that some other time. If we can be any help, please give us a call. Our phone number and address and website and stuff will come up on the, scene, on the uh, uh, screen here. We want to help strengthen your faith. In video tape number six, we're going to talk about the flood when God judged this world. What caused the flood in the days of Noah? Then on tape seven, we go through th over three hours of questions and answers. Things like, where do the races come from? What about carbon dating? What about starlight? How did the, all, we got 60 some questions we try to answer on there on videotape number seven. We want to help try to answer questions, set the record straight. God's word is true. And if you're not saved, you're going to hell, whether you believe it or not. But you can be forgiven and go to heaven if you'll accept Christ as your savior. Thank you so much.